I remember growing up and all the times that we would have Scouts on our promises and pinky promises and uh, I remember one time even I believe it was a cousin who came up with the idea of let's be blood brothers and we both used a pocket knife and cut our hands enough to bleed and then shook hands together on it and it was really kind of creepy but we all made promises through the course of our life that are honestly many of them long forgotten I mean we just we forget that we made the promise we, we make the promise in the moment because we feel like it gives us some leverage to to get past that moment to to seal the deal to make things happen we sign promissory notes even in fact our our currency in the United States is based on a promissory note it actually is called that but then there's the the mortgage or the or the the le the deal for your car the lease for your car the lease for your business equipment the the lease that you sign for your building when you rent an office building, all of those are promises of sorts. A marriage is a promise of sorts. A declaration to your son or daughter that you're going to be at their soccer game or their football game or their dance recital, it's a promise of sorts. And so we, we look at those different promises, those, those decrees, those declarations that I'm going to do this thing and and we often forget that those words have an impact on a level beyond the speaker, beyond the hearer, but they're recorded. They're recorded in heaven. Every word is either life or it's death. It's on one side or the other side. It's either destructive. I don't believe that words are innocuous. I don't believe that words are just nothing, that they just vanish into thin air if you say them. I believe they all count. All of them each one and so even those little promises that we made decades ago that we've forgotten completely about they come back they count they matter and at some point someone will call a reckoning to those promises and ask us what happened now it may not be a giant recompense like if you skip out on your mortgage payments or it may not be a big to do if you will because you missed a dinner date or didn't show up at the soccer game you promised you'd be at many of us have made those little promises to little people and forgotten them along the way and I, I don't know that there will ever be a day that your head will be required for having missed a soccer game but there are damages to your relationship that come from broken promises but see there there's another level of promise called a covenant and you can go all the way back to old testament times and and the ancient of days with human beings and find that covenants have always been just a little bit different than a promise there there are things about a covenant that they're unforgivable, they're unbreakable, they're undoable. Right? Covenants then uh, are much more like a law than they are like a promise. A promise is a human commitment for the most part. It's two people agreeing that one is going to do a certain thing and the other one will do something in response to it. Most people don't know that a marriage is a covenant, not a promise. It's a legal binding contract. A covenant a mortgage is more like a covenant than it is like a promise because a promise is generally just between two humans with no law behind it but a covenant well that's different the law of gravity is much more like a covenant it's a natural law it's already been put in place and the maker of that law the maker of that promise the maker of that covenant is the keeper of that promise, that law, that covenant. The one that enforces it, the one that it makes sure that it stays in place. If a husband and wife are in covenant together, that covenant is kept by the two of them. Sure, the law oversees it, and if they decide to go their separate ways, it takes law to undo what they've done in their covenant. But they are the covenant keepers. The husband and wife are the ones who decide how valuable is this covenant? How strong is this promise? Who will see to it that it's kept? 
And there are some laws and some covenants that have been made by the maker of the universe that, well, we may not agree with. I mean, I don't like the the law of sin and death, that if you make a mistake, there's a price to be paid for it. I, I'd rather that we could just do whatever we want to do and get away with it. No one would care. No one would notice. We wouldn't need a penal system for that, right? Some people believe that's the definition of grace, that we just do whatever we want to and there's no penalty for it. But that's not quite the case. Grace says, I recognize that you messed up and I'm going to forgive you. But it doesn't remove the consequences of having messed up. I mean, if, if you walk off the roof of your building, you have broken the law of gravity. And while grace may say, I, I've forgiven you for the stupidity of walking off the building, gravity still is going to slam you on the ground. And when it does, you can't say that wasn't grace. <laughs> because the law, the covenant of gravity is already there. That, that promise has already been made, and, and it's not going to stop working. Now, there's a law that supersedes the law of gravity. It's called lift. Not grace, but lift. It's a counter law. We talked about this the other day. So what about some of the other laws? What about some of the other covenants that have been made? See, again, when we, when we look at promises and covenants made by human beings, they're only as good, not as the covenant, but as the covenant keepers. A, a marriage decree, a marriage covenant is only as good as the husband and wife that are in it. It's only as strong as the couple willing to fight for it. It's only going to last as long as the two people who are in it. How about a promise to show up at a soccer game, or a wrestling match, or a spelling bee, or a piano recital? See, those are only as good as the people in the covenants as well. If little Susie says, I have a piano recital, and dad says, as soon as I get off work, I'm coming straight there, and then dad decides to work late, or dad forgets and goes to dinner with friends, or dad decides to stop at the store on the way home to check out the newest 4K TVs, dad's broken the covenant. Little Susie's probably still there doing her recital. She didn't decide to go skiing instead. So only one has broken the promise. Well, how long is that promise good for? Until it's broken until it's broken by someone who made it. Now, nobody else can change that promise. No one else can break that promise or keep that promise, only the two people who agreed to the promise. The covenant maker, the promise maker, that's who is held responsible for the longevity of the promise. If a man and wife are married for two years or 20 years or 30 years or 75 years, it's the two people who made that covenant who are responsible for keeping that covenant, and no one else. But when God makes a promise, or God makes a covenant, we are the recipients of it. We're the ones at the dance recital waiting for him to show up. We're the ones on the soccer field wondering if dad is cheering in the stands. We're the ones waiting to see if the maker of the promise will keep his promise. Have you ever looked at the covenants that God has made with us? Right? The law of sin and death, that, that's a covenant. Speak life and not death. Your words have power. That's a covenant. How do we know? Well, because that's how he created everything. And every promise that he's made, he is the ultimate promise keeper. And those promises, those covenants... They don't go away when a new one comes in. They may layer upon each other, but they're there. And they're going to last as long as God is there. Some people would say tithing is done away with because of the new covenant and grace. I think you probably ought to do a little more research on that personally. Gravity didn't go away just because lift came along. Yes, lift supersedes gravity. Gravity but not for everyone all the time, only for those that are applying the law. Maybe tithing has some direct implications to it. 
that are as permanent as the God who made the covenant? What about the covenant of marriage or the covenant of everlasting life? How many covenants are there that apply to you today? How many promises have been made to you? Promises that will outlive you. Promises that have either a blessing or a penalty, depending on which side of that, that promise you're on. I remember raising my children and watching the number of parents, and some still do it, who will count to three 47 times before they actually inflict punishment on their children for doing something wrong. The promise of punishment should be met in a reasonable amount of time, and it should be kept. Look at our judicial system. Our judicial system here in America says that every man has a right to a speedy trial, the outcome of which to be determined by a court of his peers, and that the outcome of their decision would be enacted quickly. Why? Because justice that takes forever isn't justice, neither for the person who's been harmed or the person who has a punishment to face. Counting to three 47 times is the breaking of a promise or a covenant. If you promised your child, if you do that again, I'm going to smack your backside. And you never do. You have not set for them the boundaries that are necessary. Punishment sometimes sets on the other side of a promise. And there are promises, there are covenants that God has made with us that to break them, to violate them, deserves punishment. And it will come. And it might come because he turns loose whatever the enemy has in mind for you because you've broken a promise or a covenant. I'm just saying, if you don't know what those covenants are, if you don't know where the boundaries are, if your parents have never taught you that respecting an adult, respecting someone of authority, respecting people who are your seniors or your elders, like a teacher or a law enforcement officer, if they've never taught you that respecting those people is required because punishment sets on the other side of it, when you find yourself in jail for slapping a police officer because you were intoxicated in public, yes, it's all over YouTube, just check it out. When you find yourself in jail facing the punishment for that, you'll realize that a promise has been broken and you're paying the price for it because your parents failed to follow the promise. We're supposed to respect authority, Romans 13. But we're supposed to have that relationship with people of authority, whether it's the leader in your church, the leader in your school, the leader in your classroom, or the leader in your home. And when we as leaders, as parents, don't show the reaction necessary behind the promise that if you do that, there are consequences. If we don't deliver the consequences that, are respons that we're responsible to deliver, then what we teach is that there are no consequences. And we become breakers of the promise. It's a tough role. But there are promises <coughs> which you have made which only you can keep. And there are promises which have been made on your behalf, which you are responsible for keeping. And there are covenants that have been made with you, between you and the one who will never go away or ever break his covenant. But because of that covenant, there's both an opportunity for you to be blessed and a punishment or a curse. And if you don't know what those are, you may find yourself in jail on Sunday morning looking back going, what the heck happened to my life? Well, you didn't know that that behavior led to punishment. But the keeper of that promise, the keeper of that covenant, he's not going to let it go. And it doesn't expire. My admonition to you today <coughs> Take some time to figure out what the covenants, the promises 
of the king are. Because they're not going to fade. They're not going to go away. In his own words, life and death may pass away, but my promises never will. Every dot and every tittle will be completed. Every law, every covenant, every promise will remain. That's what he said. Look it up. But figure out what some of those covenants and promises are. Figure out what the consequences and the rewards are. And then ask yourself, am I on the right side of that? Or am I on the wrong side? I know he's going to keep his promises. But am I keeping my side of that promise? I'm J. Lauren Norris, and you've been watching Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.